Hello and welcome. I'm very pleased to give you a special video and it's going to be about Spyderco. So I think you'll agree I love me my Spydercos. They're my favourite knives, my favourite manufacturer and uh, I've got a few of them. Here is just a, a small snippet of my selection. But the video today is not about my collection, it's about looking forward and seeing what knives can be included in my collection. Last year I brought you the 2015 Spyderco guide and I said it was the best guide, product guide I've ever seen. Well, let me tell you, you're in for a treat because this year on the 40th anniversary they brought out the newest product guide, the 2016. If you haven't already I would go and have a look on their website you can have a look at the PDF uh, version of this or you can just simply order a physical copy and they will post it out to you free of charge and you can wellow in the awe of uh, these items. I must say it also comes with a 2016 retail price guide of all of their knives so it gives you some kind of idea of how much they're going to be costing. So this guide 40 years, 1976 to 2016. Um, I love the little Spyderco logo that folds out. It's really professionally done, let me tell you. It tells you a bit, bit more about Spyderco. Welcome to the 2016 guide. Thank you for your interest in our products. Shows you the little origins. Thanks you again for making Spyderco's American Dream a reality. Let's have a look at all of these products. If you like knives, this video is going to fulfill your uh, your desires let me tell you straight away the signature series you've got the police model the police three good knives long blades they've got the back lock and it's with vg10 steel then you've got the classics the endura four and some more enduras over here such as the trainer the enduro with the with the emerson opener and the the lightweight uh, foliage green one Got a few more Endurers, you can get them in all of these flavours and you, they, it also comes with a ZDP 189 version. You've got the Titanium um, Endurers uh, and you can get it in Damascus, which is excellent. Then you've got the Delicas, very similar to the Endurers, just a bit smaller. Same kind of types of handle and steels, so again you've got a Titanium Damascus one there as well. Same flavours. And then you've got some more kind of lightweight knives. Uh, you've got the Matriarch 2, the Civilian, which is a beast of a knife. And then you've got the Matriarch 2 with the, the Emerson openers. You've got a couple of stainless steel knives. You've got the Harpy. And then you've got the Cricket. And then this is their 40 year anniversary kind of knife, their 40th anniversary. I'd love to get this. I really, really would. It, it's just, look at it. It's just absolutely incredible. I love what they've done. I really do. It's a native. The blade steel is made of DS93X4. Essentially, it's Damascus steel from the firm Dama Steel. Essentially, layers of RWL34 and PMC27, and they layer that in an intricate pattern. And it's in great laser engraved with the 40th anniversary. And then the handle is uh, fluted carbon fiber, CNC machined, uh, four way position po pocket clip. This is just, I, I couldn't think of a, of a nicer knife to commemorate their, their 40 years and celebrate. They've done an incredible job. I'd, I'd love to get one, I really would. Then you've got some other natives. Uh, you've got the fluted titanium. Um, both with S35 VN and then you've got some lightweights, they're new. I think this one with the serrations would just be an excellent little worker. And then you've got the black um, blade as well, so that's new. And then you've got some new new ones here, you've got the pink one. I think this is for the um, direct support for women battling all forms of cancer, that one, some of your proceeds go to. And then this one, so S35 VN and this one's got S110 V steel for that, that G10 version. Um, you've got the military, again you've got titanium and the fluted, uh, same steel 
but then they've got this this new blue G10 one with S110V steel so definitely a, an upgrade in steel there and likewise a paramilitary 2 with the same steel S110V uh, and the same blue G10 got the Manix 2 and Manix again I've got this blue um, G10 one and you've got this uh, you've got a dark blue one with S um, 110V also got the Manix 2 XL stretch and the stretch 2 you've got the Dragonfly different flavours Again, stainless steel, the VG10, um, H1, you can get it in as well. And then you've got the Ladybug, ZDP189, different flavours. Manbug, different blade steels. And if you're in the um, rescue services, this is the knife to go for. It really is. It just makes mince meat out of clothes, um, belt straps, breaking glass, you name it. It, it is just fantastic. And it's lightweight so it's not going to compromise your gear too much um, very quick and easy to open either hand really rope cutting you, you know wire clip it just ticks all the boxes um, for rescue knife that is the one to go for serration with VG10 yeah it means it's going to last a fair bit too uh, a fair while um, before you need to sharpen it and you can sharpen it on the Spyderco sharp maker with serrations no problem um, more different types of rescue blades Salt series, got the Pacific Salt Black, and then you've got the different colours there. Uh, then you've got the, the Salt and the Tasman. My friend's got a Tasman, lightweight. He he loves it, and I did a review of it, um, and I thought it was an excellent knife too. Um, the H1 really does, it's no gimmick, it really actually is rust proof. Um, completely. The new one that they've brought out though is called the Snap It. It's got a little carabiner clip there. You can just attach it onto onto anything with a, a spring closure. Um, so if you're a climber, outdoorsman, um, you can have that suspended from D ring or whatever. And uh, you know you've always got a knife that obviously won't rust on you or anything like that. It's quite useful. And what they've done is they've texturized kind of like the grip uh, as well. Some more. Atlantic salts a little bit larger now and then you've got this tusk which is the mariners tool um, with the LC 200N steel and um, then you've got fixed blades there's a new fixed blade out it looks very similar to like cold steel kind of neck knives that they do called the arc lightweight and that's got the H1 steel so that would be an excellent uh, knife around your neck or whatever um, you got the jump master if you, if you're into skydiving things like that that's incredible blade to have on you bio rescue as normal then you got the auto autonomy um i really like this knife and i'd love to get this one but it's restricted i'm not sure whether i could even get that into into the uk because it's it's for qualified personnel only so yeah <laughs> uh value folders Nothing's really changed much with the value folders. You've got the cap, the Chicago, ambitious, persistence, tenacious, and um, the resilience, the largest one. Very good knives, well worth the money. Flippers, I really like this one. Um, this is the Brend or Pirella Mamba. I love the, the carbon fibre, what they've done with those scales. Very sharp uh, looking. Uh, I love the cutouts. Uh, flipper, yeah, it might have the same issue as the Rubicon with the the liner lock, you're not being able to kind of disengage it fully with what with what with one hand, you kind of really have to use two because of the uh, steel on the on the titanium there. And you got the the southern folder. That's the Rubicon which I just showed you, and the Positron. I really like that that blade too. It's quite simple looking as well. Got the domino and the dice, nothing's changed there. But then this knife um, caught my eye, uh, the Mantra, and the Mantra too. Um, but specifically the Mantra, because I really like that, that kind of blade shape. It's very similar to like a UK PK, um, but it's a flipper. It's a frame lock with a um, wire clip, 
and it's CPM M4 steel. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I can't think you can get much better than, than that combination, the M4 and the titanium with the with the frame lock. I just I'd like to see the you know how well the M4 holds up with the titanium um frame lock bar thing. We'll see. And obviously uh proceeds of these two go to Parkinson, which is great. I love how you buy knives um, that you use every day or just for your collection and a little bit of money goes to, to different courses, which is great. This knife, new 2016, the Nirvana, I like it. It's got the the uh, Reeve Integral lock. What it is, is it's um, one piece of titanium for the handle. It's just one piece and it's been machined from solid stock, um, including the, the bar. Um, and then it's had a matte finish and then geometric design just chiseled out of it. So all these are kind of lines on it. So not only does it look bloody amazing, it, it's a bit functional too, because that, that will give you a little bit of grip. I really like that they are experimenting into solid piece of titanium and cutting it out, not only just the shape of it and then, you know, strapping it together, but the fact that it's just one piece and they're chiseling out patterns and um, that also are functional um, for, for, for added grip. I love it. Um, and that's the 2015 imported uh, knife of the year. Got the tie stick. That looks lovely. I love the way they've, they've machined that handle. And the Myrtle. Valotten sub hilt. Bradley Folder 2. I love the original Bradley. I might pick this up. Uh, M4. The scales. Just love. I mean, they are carbon fibre laminate um, scales but still it's it's a lovely kind of simple knife love the love the shape and everything got the square head again this is machined from solid piece of titanium got the techno I've always liked that love the love the steel then you've got the rock then you've got the li little iron spy with the Elmac steel battle station and the new one the introvert Essentially, this 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 came about um, for to use it um, in areas that did not allow fixed blades. I still think it locks, but there you go. And then this, which I was quite surprised about, is a wolf spider. And this is a collaboration with the famous, the legend, the man, the legend, Ray Mears. Um, he's done this little collaboration. I'm not too fond on the colour, if you ask me. I, I loved like the rich deep dark green um, but if you're advertising it in kind of a bush crafty way in the the summer uh, spring you you might drop this and you might never find it just just because of of the color but it looks like you can tie some kind of lanyard on it so it's it's not too bad um, but it's s30v i love the the actual um grind on there too it's compact everyday kind of carry it's got the scandy grind and it's got the G G10 and it's got the the compression lock, so it's got the same uh, lock as the the paramilitary, which everybody knows is is very very strong. I mean, obviously every lock can be, you know. I I love how how they've done that. I'm not too keen on the clip. A slice Bowie or Bowie, however you want to call that. Um, we've got the CTS XHP and the um, 10V um, for the K2. I do like both of them. Uh, the Tatanka, which looks like a tank of a knife, and the Birch ch Chubby. Uh, this has got this power lock, both of them. Then you've got the Sabo Hawk, uh, so Spyderco's kind of um, axe, uh, devastating close combat weapon, they call it. Um, smooth G10. It only weighs 700 grams, so it's less than a kilogram. I don't know, for comparison, I don't know how, how much my... My CRKT axe weighs, but I'll get back to you on that. Um, Sabo folder, you've got the Pical and the Pical trainer. Uh, the Carahawk, the Yojimbo 2, the Janisong. Uh, you've got some ethnic ethnic series. You've got the Shemp Bowie, uh, the Hungarian folder, the Nilaka, and the new, the Patada. I like the, the simplicity of that knife. It's slim. The blade shape is a nice refined blade shape and it's got N690. That really just, that, that does scream class to me. I like that knife. I like the simplicity of it. Gentlemen's knives. So you've got the little lum, the Vrango, which just reminds me of Django. And that was in the 2015 
uh, catalog. You've got the Sages 1, 2 and 3. They've done away with the Sage 3 a, a year or two ago and um, being blue with a bolt action they now do it in um, a nice car kind of black cubic check carbon fibre laminate uh, scales. I'm hoping they get, they're upgrading the um, Sage 4 at some point and obviously proceeds for all these Sages goes to Alzheimer's. Um, Chaparral, nothing's really changed with all those. Um, still lovely, lovely looking little gentleman pocket knives. The Centiponte 3 and the Kiwi 4. So they bumped up the Kiwi, VG10 and G10 scales. Cali 3 I couldn't find anywhere, so just got the Cali 3.5 now with the ZDP 189 and the 420J2, so it's kind of like sandwiched um, blade steel and Firefly. The Foundry and the Mike Draper fo folder, nothing's really changed there. Now, the Sprint Runs. They must have got my email, right? Because you know, you know what my favourite colour is. And uh, yeah, <laughs> they've just brought, brought out all of these knives in orange. So you've got all of these in this HAP40 blade steel. Uh, what it is, is uh, it's a tool steel core, which is sandwiched between layers of SUS 410. So that means it's rich in tungsten, molybdenum, vanadium, and cobalt. That is renowned uh, for its extreme toughness and abrasion resistance. Um, so these are going to be very tough use. Uh, I don't know how easy they are going to be to sharpen. They may well be easier to sharpen than S30V, but what I will tell you is that, that sandwich means that they will get very sharp and the actual edge will last a very long time. It's not really going to chip um, because of the, the extra element components. So that's my take on it. But you've got these in the Ladybug, Manbug, Dragonfly, Stretch. Uh, you've got a Manix in peel ply carbon fibre, uh, but it's got uh, 154S90V composite. You've got a military um, with five to 100 tool steel and then you've got the rock salt with VG10 um, well it says VG10 but it says H1 I'm not 100% sure where they're going with that because because um, because the Shemp rock normally has VG10 but this one's showing VG10 and H1 I'm assuming it is just H1 and I'd love to get that well, I'd love to get all of them but there we go so they're, they're the sprint runs for this year very impressed yes there aren't None of them is kind of like a showpiece that kind of catches your eye like a like a Wayne Goddard or, you know, a, a, a Calypso that's kind of like unique and that is just going to be made for that year. I do like where they're going with, with the steel, you know, the colours and just experimenting really. Anyway, right, non-locking knives. This caught my eye. Someone mentioned this, one of my subscribers, you know who you are. Everybody's been asking me to, you know, telling me, you've got to get a pits. Pits, I don't, I'm not quite sold on the name, but it's Pie in the Sky, apparently. Um, Pie in the Sky sounds lovely. Love the programme, back when I was a child. It's called the Pits. I wish it had a nicer name or something like that, but either way, the British knife, knife maker, Mike Reed, he made this popular non-folder. Uh, it's got N690 steel, which is very nice, and then it's got the titanium handle scales, and they've been colour anodised bright blue. I'd like to know how long that kind of anodization will last, and um, that'd be interesting. But it's got a wire pop, um, pocket clip. It weighs about 96 grams, so it's under that 100 gram mark, which which is always what I kind of look, look out for. The Urban, I use that every day. I'm going to be doing an, a video next week uh, about the Urban and a couple of other UK knives and things, so stay tuned for that. I can't praise that knife uh, enough. Then you've got the CTSBD1, the UK PK and the, uh, the one with the drop point blade. Then you've got the, the squeak, two versions, got the pink one there, and then you've got these uh, clip tools, um, I've got the scissors one, scissors have been fantastic, nice nice little uh, blades. And then you've got the dog tag folders, Serge Panchenko, got it right on me, no editing required, um, wear it every day, uh, love it, um, excellent knife, you know somewhere you've got a, an S30V and blade that you can use for, for all kinds of things. The Rhodey, I've got one of those, nice knife, and you get, you get it in lots of different flavours. And then you've got the, the classic bug honeybee and grasshopper knives. Got the Pingo and the Spy DK, lovely knives, incredible steel. You've got the friction folder, which I'd love to just, just have a go with and uh, do a review on sometime. 
fixed blade knives. You've got the uh, South Fork and the new, which is the Sprig. It's kind of like a bird and trout design. It's, it's ideal for processing small fish. Apparently it's got a distal taper for the friction-free cutting performance. A contour G10 handle. Very, very nice, very nice. Um, the Proficient S90V fixed blade there. The Bushcraft with 01 steel. The 440. And the Bradley Bowie. I like that. I do, I do like that solid kind of chunk um, blade blade shape. I'm not too sure about the length there. The handle may look a little bit too small, but um, it does have that kind of like finger choil um, going for it. It's got these lovely two deep holes that you could just strap it to anything. So very, very practical knife. You've got the Bill Moran, so the Moran knives, and then the Enough kind of um, knives for VG, VG10. You can get them with H1 now. Got the Puko and the Temperance 2. I love that kind of wood, wood kind of um, handle, but it's it's 3D machine Mikata, if you must know. And uh, the Street Bowie and the Street Beat, that's the new one. It's like a mini, mini bowie really, um, but with black black scales, black um, blade. Pygmy Warrior, Ronin 2 and the reverse. Kitchen knives, got Cook's knife, VG10. That's just the prototype pictured. But lovely looking handle, lovely length to that blade. And you've got some utility blades and a Santoku, all made in Seki City, Japan. Well, that one, the mini pairing knife is uh, uh, golden. You've got some sharp makers, definitely go for your sharp maker if you haven't got one already. Even if you've got like three or four knives, just get one. And then you've got different stones. Need to get my hands on the diamond cubic boron nitride at some point. Some more little sharpened stones and some extras and things. Um, the only new thing really is the mirror decals, uh, but you can get lovely display cases. Um, they're not too expensive, I don't think, either. And you get the balios, which is the pens, and then you get the, the bird knives. The only thing that's really changed is I brought out the Cara Cara in titanium, but still with the 8 CR13 MOV, and that was 2015. Best best uh, buy of the year again same but uh, the Meadowlight 2 with the titanium uh, sorry the Robin uh, different uh, and then again Robin with the titanium Crow 2 and Raven 2 they're up in the blade steel they've got CTS BD1 now so useful mention and the flight and the, the uh, turn which I've got which is it's good for the money um, and then it just goes. You, it, then it just goes into the section of education, different tools, different clips, how to change. I think that's really useful because a lot of companies will just give you a product guide and it's just the products. Whereas Spydercos is just sorry to use the pun, a cut above, because it just goes into education, steel terms, steel elements, all your steel charts with your elements there, your blade shapes, your grinds, your edge grinds, handle. Uh, material terminology, lock and joint mechanisms. I'll be doing a video about um, locks and joints um, in the not too distant future. And then it's got a picture of all of them in the book as well. They really are uh, top of their game. They are my favourite uh, knife man knife company, knife manufacturer. Um, I love you know using the the knives, uh, doing reviews on the knives, and uh, yeah, I just thought I'd share this 2016 product guide with you. And um, hopefully I'll be able to buy a, a lot more knives this year than I, than I did last year. I hope you've enjoyed that, that video. Uh, if there are any that uh, specifically take your, your eye, um, please do put it in the comments. Um, if you have a couple of them already and you want to share your views, again, this is the best place for it. Put your comment down below. If you have enjoyed this video somewhat, found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. Take care.